From the year 2010 until the year 2020, 19 homes in the United States sold for over $100 million. That's a lot, 19 homes from 2010 to 2020. But the following four years, from 2020 through 2024, we've already seen 24 homes sell in this $100 million price point, meaning that sales of homes priced at that nine figure and above range are absolutely skyrocketing. We've been talking about these luxury homes and mega mansions and in general, just crazy real estate here on the channel for a while now. So I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of weird to say, but I have become a little bit numb to these really high price tags. It's gonna be a fun video though, because today we're gonna look at some new monster mansions selling in the hills of California, some penthouses for sale at the top of skyscrapers in Manhattan, and some compounds along the coast of Florida as well. It really makes me wonder, like if we're seeing houses sell for $100 million regularly nowadays, how long is it gonna be till we start seeing houses sell for a billion dollars or more? A billion dollar price point might seem crazy, but it's not all that unrealistic that we'll see that in our lifetimes. I mean, check this article out. The cost of a home is now 20 times higher than the average home price in 1970. Back in 1970, the average home price was just $17,000. And in 2022, as of the date of this report, the average home price was 348,000. And yeah, this is looking at average home prices. I realize that luxury homes are kind of their own category, but if you look at it this way, I don't think it's completely unrealistic to see luxury homes do a roughly 10x return over the next 50 years. Today, I wanna to look at pretty much everything that's for sale at this $100 million price point or higher all across the country. But before we do that, when I was putting this video together, I started to wonder, where exactly did this all begin? Like when was the first $100 million sale? Well, going back to the year 2000, the financier Gary Winnick bought a 1930s mansion in Bel Air from David Murdoch. He paid $94 million for this 28,000 square foot estate. So that was close, but not quite there. It didn't pass that nine figure price point. It wasn't until 2007 until we had our first nine figure sale, at least as far as I could find. This was when investment manager Ron Barry Aaron bought a 40 acre estate in the Hamptons for $103 million. Talk about some bragging rights, like, yep, I was the one to buy the first $100 million house in the country. In 2008, a Russian billionaire bought Donald Trump's Palm Beach estate for $95 million, which, side note on this one, Trump was said to have made a profit of $54 million on that deal. By 2011, we had another $100 million sale happen over in Los Altos. This was a 30,000 square foot house sold to a Russian investor, Yuri Milner. In 2012, the penthouse at the top of Manhattan's 150 sold to Bill Ackman for $90 million. Crazy price tag and what's even crazier is the building was still under construction when he made this buy. Also in 2012, a nine acre compound in Woodside, California sold for $117.5 million. This was a small one. It was just a 9,000 square foot house. Not sure who the buyer was here. And then later that year, another record was set when hedge fund manager Barry Rosenstein bought an 18 acre estate in the Hamptons for a whopping $147 million. It's crazy looking back, because when we see this trajectory, homes kind of went from that $90 million price point to the $100 million price point pretty fast, which is kind of wild. That's a $10 million spread in just a couple years time. But when you think about it, 90 million to 100 million is only like a 10% jump. That's pretty much the same thing as looking at a home that once sold for 200,000 and then sold for 220,000 just a couple of years later. Now we've talked about a lot of these high priced homes here on the channel in the past. In fact, it's pretty much all we talk about. Like we've got Jay-Z and Beyonce's house in Malibu that sold for $200 million last year. That was a big one. We looked at a $120 million penthouse condo that sold in a development called Shore Club in Miami. The other day we talked about Ten Tarpon Isle, which just closed in Florida for $152 million. There was Ken Griffin's house in Palm Beach, which is a collection of neighboring properties really. It's valued at like $300 or $400 million just for the land alone. This is where he's built that huge compound for himself. And of course, there's the one, the house that got more coverage on this channel than anything I've ever talked about. This house sold for $141 million back in 2022. And hey, I'm just gonna say it, is there anyone else out there who misses those days, like when we used to talk about the one every couple of weeks? 
It was kind of a sad story in some ways, but you got to admit, it was a good story. If you're an OG of the channel and you remember all those one videos, leave a comment down below. Now we all know that these nine figure houses are more than just housing for these billionaires. These are huge assets that make up a big portion of these people's net worth, but homes aren't the only physical asset that these billionaires are investing their money in. They're putting a lot of their money into something else and that is fine art. We've got Jay-Z and Beyonce who dropped $20 million on art, Jeff Bezos who spent $70 million on art, and even Oprah who made a $60 million profit on art. And with today's sponsor, Masterworks, we all can get into these blue chip art investments as well. How it works is Masterworks buys blue chip art like a Picasso, and then they break the painting into shares through what they call offerings. This way, Masterworks gets you access to iconic artists like Picasso and Banksy without the usual barriers to entry. It's cool because when you sign up with Masterworks, you can control the size of your investment with Masterworks. You no longer need millions and millions of dollars to access these investments that used to only be made available to the super rich. You also don't need to be an art expert to do this. Masterworks already has over 900,000 members. And another thing that's cool is if an offering that you have in invested in sells, you would receive a share of the proceeds. Masterworks has completed 23 successful exits so far and over $60 million in total proceeds has been distributed to investors. To skip the wait list and start your art investment journey, you can use the QR code on the screen here or click the link down in the description to get started. Thank you Masterworks for sponsoring today's episode. Let's get back to the video. So like I said, we've been talking about these nine figure deals on the channel forever and I don't want to focus on a bunch of houses today that we've already looked at. So what I want to do is go to each major market and just look at what's on the market right now for over $100 million. And we're going to start with California. Most of you guys who have been in tune with the channel for a while know that these high, high price points are happening in Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, Malibu, kind of this general region of LA. The most expensive house in all of LA right now and one of the most expensive houses in the entire country is this one off Bellagio Road. They're asking $195 million. It's been on and off the market for quite a while. The place is called Casa Encantada. This shows it was originally listed in November of 2023. I feel like it's been for sale a little bit longer. Check this out though. You buy this house, your property taxes alone are going to be $1.1 million per year. Just quickly tabbing through the photos, you guys are gonna see that this is one of those estates that is every bit of an estate. Like from the outside, you got those grand columns, the big motor court is sitting on a bunch of acreage. You have this huge backyard, everything's super lush. The place is crazy private. It's sitting behind these gates. You got this long winding driveway that takes you up to the house. There's all this stonework throughout, mature plants all over the property, water features. Inside, not my taste at all. I mean, it feels kind of gross and dated to be honest, but it takes a particular type of buyer who's looking for a place like this. For some reason, I feel like maybe someone who's not even from the United States buys this house. I feel like the people who live in LA who are looking for an expensive property, generally they're looking for those more like super contemporary style houses. This is that like old world money kind of a vibe. 729 Bel Air Road is on the market for $150 million. This is a nine bedroom, 20 bathroom house. That's a lot of bathrooms. And check this one out. So you go down to the price history here. So this place last sold in 1995 for 7.4 million. Now they want 150. No idea why they're trying to justify a $150 million price tag. I mean, this place has views. It's definitely grand. It's got some acreage. It's private. It checks a lot of the same boxes as that last one that we looked at, but Inside, it also has kind of a dated feel to it. So something tells me the 150 million is them just kind of shooting for the moon and hoping that there's some crazy developer out there who wants to buy this place just for lot value, scrape it, build a monster house in its place, but who knows? This place off 1200 Bel Air Road is asking 139 million. It's a new construction home, super modern, cool house, and has featured this one on his channel. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. It's called La Fin. This house has been for sale since February of 2022. So it's been for sale for, what is that? Like almost two and a half years. It's a cool property. I feel like it's got tons of wow factors throughout. It is kind of a masculine vibe, I guess. It's very like dark with the finishes throughout. 
So maybe that's part of the problem of why it's not selling. I don't know. It's a huge asking price though. I heard at one point there was rumors about this property facing foreclosure, but maybe the developers found their way out of that loan. I don't know. Awesome house. Can't believe it's still on the market and they haven't budged a dollar on their price. We don't have time to look at all of them guys, but the manor here off Mableton, this house has been on the market for a couple years as well. It's a 56 thousand square foot mega mansion. I mean, talk about a mega mansion. So that one they're asking 137. This one here, we talked about in the past, this place is super cool off Gloaming Drive. These are all just renderings in the photos here though. This place isn't even built yet and they're uh, really shooting for the moon with that price point. And then one more in LA, over a hundred million is this house off Shalon. Huge property. It looks like a castle in the photos. They're asking 115 million for this one here. Nine bedrooms, 13 baths, 15,000 square feet. This is a new listing too. This one's only been on the market 13 days. All right, you guys, let's check out Florida next. And Florida's one that doesn't come up as often, but there are some very expensive parts of Florida, particularly the Palm Beach area, but we've got some high-priced homes on both coasts. First, starting with 100 Bay Road for 295 million. We did talk about this one on the channel in the past. It's a six bedroom, 24 bathroom, 22,000 square foot property. If you missed that last video, this is an absolute compound. There's three houses here. It's like 1,650 feet of total water frontage. So the offering here is you could either buy this property and just enjoy these homes, or you can buy it and develop it. You can subdivide it up or whatever. There's a bunch of options, but 300 million bucks. That's crazy. This one here, I don't even know what this is. So 174,747,000. We've never even looked at this one before. I guess it was originally listed in February. They removed it for a little while though. It just re-hit the market in May. They're saying six bedrooms, 16 baths, 8,800 square feet, 8.5 acre lot. So it's a big lot. This is another one that's all about the land and the water frontage. We've got 15 acres and 812 feet of water frontage. You can see it's three properties total they're combining here. All these pictures of the house that's here right now, I'm assuming are just to like give you some perspective to what's possible. Whoever buys this is probably gonna completely level this property just like they're doing over here to the left and they're gonna build something on their own. It actually has its own couple of ponds. Like this one has a bridge that goes over it. You spent 175 million here on just this huge lot you're gonna end up spending another couple hundred million to develop this property. Like who really wants to be $500 million into a single residential house? You see, that's about it for Florida. We're just looking at a bunch more land. So this one, $99 million. They're advertising this one just as the land as well. This one, $88.9 million. There's actually two neighboring lots also advertising these just for the lot alone. Every once in a while, you'll get lucky. Like if you were one of those people who owned one of those lots right around where Ken Griffin started to build, you hit the lottery when Ken Griffin's team called you up and said, hey, yeah, you know that little two acre lot you own out in Palm Beach? I want that, I'll pay you a hundred million. Something tells me these other people might be sitting on these lots a little while longer, but something also tells me they're probably not hurting for the cash. Okay, now we're on to New York. This is the last area that's constantly coming up here on the channel with these crazy high price point homes. We've got a couple over a hundred million here. Take a wild guess where all of these are located. They're right in this little pocket. They're in Manhattan. First, of course, we got the penthouse at Central Park Tower. They're asking 195 million for this place, 17,000 square feet. This is the one that Ryan Serhant has nicknamed the one above all else. He calls it that because I think that this is actually the tallest residence in the world, meaning that if you buy this place and you live here, you're gonna be living higher at a higher elevation than anyone else in the world, like even Dubai. It's a really incredible property. The staircase is really cool. I'm kind of surprised they haven't hooked a buyer for this one yet because we've seen people buy these properties before they're even finished in New York before. This apartment is done, it's staged, it's epic, but it's just a weird market. Interest rates are still high. The billionaire who buys this house might actually get a loan. Oftentimes they do for tax reasons or whatever. So. I'm sure it'll sell at some point. They're not budging on price. Number two in New York is this one, another unit in Central Park Tower, 150 million. It's a little smaller, it's 11,000 square feet. We don't need to look through all the photos. It's very similar to that other apartment. Let's just look at one, look at this. You spend $150 million and this is gonna be your kitchen. My kitchen is bigger than this. Like, this, that's crazy, but that's just New York for you, right? Next up, we have a penthouse at 432 Park. One of the more hated buildings in New York, one of my personal favorites. I love this building, but there's a, 
a lot of haters out there, a lot of people who show up in the comments who don't love this building, but check out the price history on this one. They were originally asking 180 million about a year ago, and now they're down to 150. 5 million. Talk about a price cut. It's 432 Park, so you got all those square windows throughout the property, which are pretty cool. They like picture frame each individual view or direction that you're looking. It's a big apartment. It's at the top of 432 Park, which is awesome on one hand because of the views you get, but maybe a little sketchy on the other hand because of all those alleged issues they've had at 432 Park with like the elevators breaking and the building swaying and stuff. But um, there have been a few big sales in this building recently, so who knows? Maybe they'll get their price. It's only been on the market like a month. Then that wraps it up for New York. It's weird though, because you got these Manhattan properties, so these are all your penthouses. And then when we go just under $100 million, we get into some of the surrounding areas still in New York though, like this one here, which is in Water Mill, $99.5 million. That pretty much counts, right? So the last couple of places we looked at are what? Like one to $200 million, and you don't even get a backyard, let alone a ton of space. This one, less than 100 million, you get 24 bedrooms, 38 bathrooms, 45,000 square feet. And this is your property. You're sitting on 21 acres of land on the water with a dock. I mean, I don't know about you guys, this is a pretty epic estate. It'd be hard deciding which way I wanted to live. Like if I had $100 million to spend, would I wanna live here or would I wanna live in a penthouse in New York? Tough call, this isn't exactly my style of house, but I think I'd rather take the house versus the condo. As I was looking around, check it out, I found this little graphic too. So this is the most expensive neighborhood in every US state. There's a bunch on here that we didn't even talk about today. Like, let me zoom in here. So Beverly Hills, obviously that's a big one. Average home price, 22 million. Snowmiss, Colorado, average home price, 23.5 million. Here in Arizona where I live, DC Ranch, that's quite a bit north of me, 8.5 million is the average price up there, crazy. Island Park, Texas, 7.3 million is the average home price. Bella Mead, Tennessee, 7 million. Manalapan, I'm probably not even pronouncing that right, in Florida, that's the most expensive neighborhood in the entire country. $39.7 million for the average price home. And then let's see, what is the most affordable, most expensive neighborhood in the country? I think it's probably, yeah, Ashland, Nebraska, 884,000. Nope, nope, Oxford, Mississippi, 592,000. So that's interesting. The most expensive neighborhood in all of Mississippi, a home costs 592,000. I think that's about the average price of a home out where I live. I think I need to move to Mississippi, you guys. Now, what I'm wondering is whether or not this is sustainable, right? Like we've got houses that have sold for $100 million. They've been selling at this price point for a while. They are skyrocketing in the sense that there's more now than ever, but at the same time, we have a lot of $100 million inventory sitting on the market like we saw today. So are we in a bubble? Is this bubble going to pop or are prices just gonna keep going up forever? The way I look at this is that the people who buy these properties are the richest of the rich. You pretty much have to be a billionaire to buy a 100 plus million dollar home. And as a billionaire, you're very used to spending tons of money on stuff, whether it's your private jets or your yachts or like your art collection, like we talked about earlier. And the thing is, when you have a billion dollars, you don't just want that money sitting around in a bank account. You're gonna lose a fortune just to inflation if you do that. So it kind of makes sense to park some of your money in these real estate deals. And why would you buy a hundred $1 million houses when you could just buy one $100 million house and call it a day? Of course, there would be benefits to them having some diversification. Like if I was a billionaire, I kind of feel like I would rather buy five $20 million mansions instead of buying just one $100 million mansion. But then again, these people are probably just so busy and their lives are already so complicated. Plus, Let's face it, they all enjoy owning these trophy assets. So why complicate their life even more by owning a bunch of houses when you could own just one? That's a wrap for today's episode. And if you enjoyed the video, just remember, it helps the channel out a lot if you either hit the like button down below or leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this crazy nine-figure trend that we're seeing in real estate. I'll see you guys next week.